Welcome back guys, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to make a stack of money using Geometry Nodes in Blender. Now Geometry Nodes may be a new thing to a lot of you, but it's super cool. I'm going to be going through how to set all of this up, how it kind of works. Now a few months ago, and this is kind of where I'm getting at, CG Matter did a tutorial where he made a stack of dollar bills and he used an array modifier, kind of applied it, and then used a randomized transform to kind of get this effect, which is perfectly fine and you can use it. But I thought I'd kind of show you guys how to do that same thing with the geometry node setup and how to make it like a modifier over here that you can very quickly just add some information to like the amount of the stack like some of the node spacings themselves and the random placement of those nodes and it's just something you can really quickly add to any kind of mesh object in blender and you can edit these nodes super quickly and it gives you a lot of control. It's completely um, a non-destructive way of working. So if you think this is something you would enjoy and you'd like to learn, uh, keep watching the tutorial and I'll show you how to do it. Because we're gonna be working with geometry nodes, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have Blender 2.93, which is what I'm using, or newer if you're watching this in the future. Go ahead and open up a new scene and then we can get started with this tutorial. Now, if you don't have a image or a texture of a dollar bill, I wanna put a link in the description to this one right here, which is just an American $1 bill. It's free to download and free to use. It's on Pixabay. You're just gonna come here and just do a free download. I've downloaded mine and I've just put it on my desktop here. So let's get back into Blender. So what we're gonna first of all do is we're gonna create the thing that our geometry nodes is gonna be referencing. In that case, it's gonna be the dollar bill that's gonna be stacked up and duplicated and we're gonna be adding the different attributes to it. So let's just start by selecting our default cube. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go into my top of graphic view. I'm gonna go S, X, and I'm just gonna scale this roughly about how long a dollar bill would be. And yes, I know you could import an image as a plane, but I'm just doing it like this. So roughly like that. And then I'm gonna go S, Z, and I'm gonna flatten it. And I'm just roughly making what would be a dollar bill. I can edit it a little bit later. So just something that's a bit paper thin. Um, look at some reference images, but maybe even a little bit thinner. So I'm just scaling it down into Z a little bit, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over to our materials real quick and when I click on materials and because it was a default cube it's going to have a material by default so I'm just going to name that note and let's just come over here to our base color and we're going to click on this little yellow dot this little tab here and it's going to bring up all these options we're going to go to our textures let's just click on image texture and we're going to click on open and I'm going to go to my desktop and where I downloaded that dollar bill image so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go open image so if I now hit Z and I go material preview it's not gonna be quite right if you see the texture here because it's relying on the UV mapping of the original cube. So let's go over to our UV editing workspace and this should all be active by default. So make sure you select everything in the edit mode here. Go to your top orthographic view and then you're gonna hit U and you're gonna go project from view. Now you're gonna come over here in this window and you're just gonna go S to scale it up and just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if you now come over here and hit Z and you go material preview, you're gonna see your $1 bill. So let's go back to our layout. Then now that's pretty much done, that's super simple. So we're now just gonna also just select these other objects in our scene, we're gonna hit X and just delete to get them out of the way. Select the dollar bill again, and before we get started, it's gonna really matter that we apply these vectors. So let's hit N on our keyboard, hit N to open up our properties panel up here. I'm gonna click on the items tab and you're gonna see over here are our transform vectors. So in this case, we have the location vectors, the rotation and the scale. Now the one we wanna be focusing on here is the scale vectors. You can see they've all changed now because we scaled this note. So we wanna apply these. So with the note active, we're gonna hit Control A or Command A if you're a Mac user and we're gonna just apply the scale. That's really important. So to confirm, you should be able to see that all of these transform vectors here for the scale are now set to a value of one each. Once you've done that, you now have your bill here. Let's actually go to our object properties here with the bill still active and let's just call it um, $1, okay? So it's a $1 bill. And you can just move it over to the side if you want, but just to make it easier, with this dollar bill active, you can just hit M on your keyboard and we're gonna create a new collection. So click on new collection after you've hit M. And let's just call it um, ref, because this is the, the gonna be the object or the item that our node setup is gonna be referencing and duplicating. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And we should now see a collection up here with a $1 bill in it, 
Okay, so we can now untick this to hide it. So we don't need to see it at the moment. And we're gonna just click on this collection here and let's just call that um, stack, okay? Once again, this is just for organization purposes. So I've just got the stack collection here and a ref, and we can just bring that back if we need to. So now we're gonna add in any piece of geometry. Now the way the node, um, geometry nodes work is pretty much a modifier of sorts. So if we go Shift A, go to your mesh options, it really doesn't matter. You can add in any piece of mesh. You can add in a Suzanne monkey head, a cube, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna add in a circle. It's completely irrelevant. And you should see here that the circle is in that stack collection here. Um, if it's not, just grab it and drag it on there, okay? So now we're gonna go over to our modifiers. And there's actually two ways you can add this. You can go to add modifier, and you can just add geometry nodes. And what I'm gonna show you is this way. So we're gonna come here to the little plus at the top, and we're gonna to go to general, and we're just gonna create a new workspace, a custom workspace. Let's go to layout. We now have a new workspace. I'm just gonna double click on this little tab, and I'm gonna call it geo nodes for geometry nodes. And I'm just gonna come over here down to the corner till I see a little X. And I'm gonna just click by left clicking and I'm gonna drag up and I'm gonna create this new workspace. I'm gonna to come to the little drop down on this tab and let's make this our geo nodes editor right here. So now this is how we can also add. Like I said, you can come here to the modifiers, add the geo nodes, or you can come over here and just click new, which I'm gonna do. And let's call this um, stack of notes. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just calling it stack of notes. And what you're gonna see here is a group input and a group output. So just like you do with any other kind of node setup in Blender, whether it's your shading or your compositing, you can do the same kind of command. So Shift A over here in this workspace will get you all of these options here and also a search menu. So let's get started by adding in our first node, which is gonna be a line note. So let's go Shift A to search. We're gonna click here and we're gonna type in line. And you're gonna see here the line node. So we're gonna click on it, and we're just gonna put it right on top of this um, cable here, and it's gonna automatically connect itself. And this thing is essentially gonna, if I just quickly drag that out, this is gonna tell us once we do add in a point instance, it's gonna tell it what the count is gonna be, so how many of them there's gonna be. And it's also gonna give us the ability to control these um, transform, ve these vectors here to determine like the gap or the spacing or whatever. But first of all, like I said, we obviously need to reference the note. So let's go Shift A. And the way you do that is by going here to search and you're gonna type in point and you're gonna get a point instance. So get the point instance and you're gonna get this option here. You're gonna click on it, this little box, and let's get that $1 bill, which you can remember from earlier, we put in the references here, but you don't need to see that. It doesn't matter. And we're gonna leave it as an option here. So let's take this, an object, and we're gonna take this now, we're gonna just drag it on top of this cable. It's gonna automatically connect itself. So we've got the geometry going to the geometry here, and then the geometry going into the group output. And now you're gonna see our notes. And in fact, if you hit Z and you go into material preview, you can also see the materials on top of there. Now what we need to do is we need to come over here to this count, and this is where you can determine like it implies the count. So in this case, you can see there's 10. If I typed in five, we now have five notes stacked on top of each other. But what we wanna come over here is to the one meter distance here, and we're gonna just click here and make it 0.003, and we're gonna hit enter. Now if we zoom in, we can see that these node notes are actually stacked on top of each other. And you can also go into your front or graphic view, and if you not see any gap in here, you can just come to this value here and make it 0.001 maybe, or maybe just 0.01. Try some different values, but um, we don't want this gap here to be um, too big. So I'm just gonna go with maybe 0.005, uh, maybe 0.009. Okay, it depends on the scale and thickness of your notes. So I'm just gonna go with something like that for now. Mess around with that one, but essentially on the Z axis or Z value, you can see here up and down, that's gonna control it. And just like you would add an array modifier, um, it can give you this exact same sort of kind of um, thing going on here. It's essentially just an array modifier, but in a node form. So just leave that at 0 0.009, should be fine. Now, if you wanted to make a stack of notes, pretty much at this point, you would already have a stack of notes, but it really just looks too perfect and doesn't look like a traditional stack that has a little bit of variation. So that's what we're gonna add in a few more nodes. Now we could tilt the stack by messing around with these vectors here, but that's gonna look completely unnatural. It's not like it's a stack of cards that we're folding out. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an attribute randomized node, which is gonna allow us to make some random placement for these individual notes in the 3D space here. So we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna search, and we're gonna type in attribute, because it's an attribute. And we're gonna get attribute randomized down here. And we're gonna place that right over here on this cable. So it should be between the line and the point instance. What we're gonna do here is because we wanna be working with the vectors, we're gonna change it from float to vector. And let's make the operation here an add operation. And we wanna be using the position as an attribute. So let's come here to the attribute, click on it, and let's choose the position, okay? And at the moment, it's gonna be all over the place. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come down to this, these values here, just hover over it and just hit the backspace key, and it's gonna set all of those vac vectors to zero. So there's a little handy shortcut. So now if we wanted to do, what we could do is we can come over here to this, these ones down here under the max. We can zoom in here and we can come here and just type in, for example, a value. So on the Z here, I've typed in a value and that's gonna randomize the Z stack. So how much of a gap there is going up on the Z, which doesn't really make sense because gravity will be holding them all on kind of evenly together. So we're gonna leave that at zero and we're not gonna mess with it. But where it's gonna become interesting, if we take these vectors here, which is gonna be our Y and X, and we give them a little bit of a value, for example, maybe 0 0.05 or something, we can now see we have some random random variation going on. On the X here, maybe we can go here 0 0.03 or something, and now we have some random variation going on on that axis. So that's how you can create a nice kind of random variation going on there. And that's how simple it is. So you can mess around over here with the height, pretty much, as you can see. You can come over here and you can mess around with the count, how many notes you want, and then you can come over here to the attribute randomize, and you can mess around with these ones here to give it a bit of random variation and not make it look like an absolutely perfect stack. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna quickly show you how you can put this into a bit of a neater node setup. So if we get a, okay, I'm gonna quickly show you. If we take the count here, right? If you look over here in your modifiers, you're gonna see we have the geometry node modifier, but you've got no options over here to control anything. But if you take your count here, for example, and you plug it into one of these empty sockets, you can see we now have a count here. You can come over here and you can double click on it and you can call it whatever you want. So I can call it stack amount. So how many notes there are. And now you're gonna see over here, we have a slider where we can come and increase how many notes we have. We can even add a keyframe to it which is really cool. So if I wanna type in 25, I now have that 25 there. And we can do the same thing with these vectors, but at the moment there's only one vector output here. So if we wanted to control any one of these individually, we can get a, combi a combine X, Y, and Z. So let's go Shift A, let's search and get a combine. So type in combine, and then get a combine X, Y, and Z. And now what we can do is we can plug this vector into here, and let, let's only take the Z one here for our stack gap put it in here, and now we have the Z here, so we can come over here, double click on the Z, and let's call that Z and put um, stack gap. I guess that's the gap between the notes, or you can even say, um, let's say something like note gaps. So note gaps, and now we can come over here and we can control this value here, and that's gonna control our gaps in between our notes. How cool is that? So now we can also take, for example, these, these two random vectors that we wanna control. So for example, this the X and the Y in this case. So we can also just grab this combine X, Y, Z. We can go Shift D, move it over here, plug in the vector to the max here. And now let's just take the two we wanna control. So we're gonna take the X here and plug it into there. And we also wanna take the Y, but we don't wanna make two sockets to waste space. So if we go Shift and we left click, or right click, so shift right click, we can drag over here and that's gonna make a cut. And then we can click on this little new node here, we can drag out and put that into the Y. And now both of those are going into this X over here, which is generated. So let's come over to that X, double click on it, and let's call that um, randomize. And now we should see over here a randomize option as well. So now in this node setup here, this um, modifier, we can just come here and drag that value and we can randomize that, um, how the nodes are kind of all leveling out so that it's not perfectly stacked on top of each other. And now we have this nice node, so let's just call it note stack. And let's go back to our layout. And now we have this modifier here which we can use to control 
the, the amount of notes, the gap in between the notes, and how random the pieces of individual paper are. So that's how simple that is, and you can at any time add in any mesh object, come here to your modifiers, give it a geometry modifier, you can come to the drop down and give it a stack of notes, and now you can make a custom variation of that, make it as high as you want, and that's the beauty of geometry notes. So I hope you guys have learned some basics of geometry notes and you found this tutorial useful. If you have, um, give a like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon in the description below. I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.